Hello, I am Gareth Scoop and welcome to my first look at Rage 2 on the PlayStation 5. No PlayStation centric updates for this unfortunately. We are looking at 60 frames per second and 1080, although it does appear to be 720p, there's something up with the distance granulation. But I didn't give this game the time it deserved in 2019 on its release. I played it for about 5 hours, whacked it on the channel, get it out for the clout. So it's more about an in-depth look this time round and I freaking love it. So Rage 1 was massive, it came out on the Xbox 360, it was made by id and it just reeked of quality open world first person adventure game. There was like a shit ton of upgrades, really detailed intelligent enemies, robot spiders, a boomerang and a quite cool story laid over this amazing open world format that they put together which was like missions, going to various sub quests, sort of being your own boss. Welcome to the Dead Primer Tavern, home of the slime vocal Jimmy Chang. Both of them, as far as I can tell, are set in a post-apocalyptic world. You get huge Fallout vibes with this. You get Doom vibes with the combat. Now, this is Avalanche Studios. The sequels went over to the guys that gave us Mad Max. And when you look at it on paper, these two games are very, very similar. Why are you re-reviewing it? Well, I want to see what it looks like on the PlayStation 5. And giving this game four or five hours on the day of its launch and then putting a video out about it was not really doing it any justice at all. You still get tutorials and new moves 12 hours into the game. I've put nearly 15 into it this time around. And I've had a rip-roaring ride and also been very impressed with these graphics. It's this relentless performance that will get you. You're like, oh my god, I mean, Cyberpunk does not keep up with this pace. Even games like Atomic Heart that uses the dash, this implemented an L1 slide out the way well before loads of the big names doing it all the time. It did a lot of stuff with this open world format that loads of shooters are sort of catching up with. It was very ahead of its time, but it wasn't marketed very well. And it also suffers badly from just not telling you how the damn game works. And that's what a lot of people, I think, hit a brick wall on is you get to around about level three or four and you have to start proactively looking to rank up with the various NPCs on map to progress in the game. So it's not like go to the next mission, go to the next stage. You've got to just go around, discover spots to up the reputation of that particular boss NPC. Systems activating. This vehicle mechanic, it feels like a better designed version of that Mass Effect vehicle. And also it's like a big track, so it's really heavy. And there's loads of debris on the sides of the roads that will kick up if you like don't stick to the beaten track. And this race is, goes very crazy on what it puts you through on the main campaign. If you want to avoid excitement, don't play any of that main campaign. The combat is quake level fast and it doesn't drop a single frame and there's lots of explosions going on, there's lots of people on multi-tiered levels and you've got a scanner so you know which way everything's coming at you from. It's extremely enjoyable and it takes like nanoseconds to come up to speed with how ferocious those frame rates make this gunplay feel. Quake and the originals, having those back on the PC at high settings, this is the most similar thing I've come across. It's so blisteringly fast that you're smiling but that is not the most deep element of the game. It certainly hooks you in, don't get me wrong, but it's all about developing relationships with the mayor and the people that organize certain sections of the map and going up against this mysterious high-tech enemy called the Authority. All of this grunt work and sort of dealing with these normal enemies is day-to-day -day stuff, but there's a bigger picture at foot. There's also no gun drops, no loot, nothing like that. You have to get ammo and you have to replenish your own health, which is quite old school. You're looking for loads of packs towards mid-game because it just stops giving them to you. You have to buy them, use merch, there's an economy. This is really sounding like a deep modern AAA action role-playing game. So there's like a specials icon thing down in the bottom left of the screen and you'll see that I've only got one of the spots filled. That's 12 and a half hours in. There's a lot to be unlocked with this game and all of your sort of bedrock guns can start having a bit of personality put into them, armor piercing, quick reloads, 
there was a free skin it went crazy when i put the disc back in with free stuff announcements i had to like restart it because it kept flashing up all of these you've just unlocked x y and z also like mad max you get that car forever in the game that can have bolt-ons put onto it but you can also just approach any other vehicle enemy or good guys and just start herring around in it using its weapons you get it back to base you get to keep it same system as that beautiful mad max model If they could give us a 2K patch on this, sorting out that resolution, this game would be absolutely min. And it still does perform pretty damn well on a big old television. You don't get too annoyed with some of that distance granulation because it's just so fast. There is nothing slowing it down at all. And that goes for driving around the open world. And there's kind of a minimalization on popping as well. I only spotted it like a handful of times. Well, Spring. The hubs are kind of dressed up to be more than they actually are with a few vendors here and there giving you sort of car slots as well that's where you can switch things out and there's a little like ad hoc mission station which is probably some additional content there was quite a big download no playstation 5 centric one obviously but there's quite a lot of free content and some dlc shoved in there <laughs> impressive you think you can catch a bullet too Lusum Hagar, mayor of... Things did start coming back to me from that original playthrough. There's been a lot of water under the bridge with first-person shooters, and obviously I've looked at, I don't know, well over 150 different titles in those three years, so it was a bit sketchy. But as soon as he was talking about that Mutant Bash TV, as soon as that came up, I was like, oh, and I had this flashback to those nightmarish missions right at the start of the game where it just locks you in the sewer, it gives you a wave system that just scares the Christ out of anyone. Lucem, entering the Mutant Bash TV arena. Keep an eye on your TV screen because it's time to crack some muty skulls. I know you can and I know you will. Also, trying to observe how off the wall it is, how sort of Mad Maxi it is, or even Fallout, Dystopia, everyone's a little bit mad, but it, it really is strange in areas. Some of it does not age well, it's just weird, especially some of the evil NPC characters and the boss you're dealing with. There's like these two different sets of enemies that you're dealing with. You've got these base level junk rat borderlands bandit types, which were a common and occupy a lot of the structures. Then you've got the authority, which are like weird white robot zombies, but they also have spacecraft and like tech suits. The whole thing is a bit mind blowing, but nothing beats slaughtering these mutants. <laughs> It's so good. With that voiceover as well, it's like Smash TV, you know, it's like you're on Carnage Channel. It's amazing. And the random encounters with vehicles outside on the maps, also you've got to kill these annihilator things that just come rolling through. We'll get to that in a second. That is, I think, far more intense than a lot of the Mad Max chases in that particular game. It's also quite difficult to tell what level you actually are. When you look at the map, it tells you what level the event is, but knowing what you are or what difficulty you should be approaching things at isn't made too clear. And I think that's where a lot of people hit brick walls is wandering into situations that they weren't powerful enough for. But remember, you can always hightail it out of there. After a while, you get some set-piece bosses, and there's a character called Clegg Clayton. I think he's pronounced like that, and it's a blatant switch on Trump. It's a really obvious orange man bad, and it's he was probably in in that time. But it's a bit obvious, doesn't really uh, work very well, and you just it's too much of a trope, it's too easy a target. It happens in the Borderlands quite a lot, actually. They've got a villain in Borderlands 3, and you can just imagine, you know, the blue-haired intern rubbing their hands together. They're like, oh, yeah, we've got one on, over on him. You haven't. <laughs> doesn't really hold back with its location foliage and fauna either and I did actually notice I brought this game in the Middle East funnily enough and on the front of the box it's actually got 21 uh, age restriction on it so some of that might point to it GTA 4 and 5 were both banned in the Middle East also you had to sort of get them on the gaming black market 
That was how I got a lot of my early editions of games, and that's how I managed to get hold of this two days before release, can you believe? There's the uh, cleft palette again. I say it again because I just deleted a rant about how everything's got a cleft palette in this game. It doesn't really seem as a sort of thing you should have on enemies. It's not really that out of the box an idea. I see it as more of an affliction than a grotesque mutation, right? So that sort of fell on deaf ears. I wanted there to be more creatures and indigenous life. There's not actually a single like funny little alien walking around this planetary surface. There is, however, just everything else going on and enough bullets flying around it actually brings me onto its instantly recognizable aesthetic with the use of these pinks it's a really cool idea even the track on the road where you're supposed to go is like a pink arrow the stuff you need to interact with is always a pink and the cover and the whole game is instantly recognizable with its palette especially when you get outside and start dealing with those colors on the skies and the ground this dude was where i stopped when i first went through this playthrough Doc, the authority mutants are no longer a threat. You're good to go. Ah, so swiftly too. Because what happened is, it's just not clear to you where you need to go for your upgrades, what you need to do next, and which task is the most important, by the way. Look at the nuclear uh, backfires that these cars leave. Every chase is like this. White knuckle stuff, all the rubble coming off, and the way the frames keep up with any amount of cars on track that brings me on to the annihilator fire when the boot opens up unbelievable there's a love death and robots that's not too dissimilar to this and i've also just come off the back of firing from your car in cyberpunk which took them nearly four years patch 2.0 put the link in this was doing it on day one so you'll you're wrestling with the acceleration. You're also using triangle to put out this big like EMP to make it push out these vulnerable bits. It was well tense and I felt like I'd done something. I just want to talk about commandeering those enemy vehicles very quickly. They purposely leave some really badass ones in and around bases, but no one in them. And you, it's not like you have to level up your break-in skills. You just climb in and cause massive panic. You're looking at four-year-old footage here from a game that did not sell very well. If you got to watch my Mad Max review, that's the merchant going off the cliff there, then you'll know that I loved collecting the vehicles and sort of having them as your own, taking them out on different missions. Because this has got a Just Cause 4 vibe also from the Avalanche vein, there's also the sort of libraries, changing the skins out, making everything look personalised. It's a, it's a great idea. This is a great example of how on the ball some of the AI detection is. Not all of it. Vehicles seem to be a bit sharper. You can see now that I've got in the bottom left L1 and a little punch symbol. There's three others that I haven't got and the skull is your sort of override special mode. Now I'm jumping in on these guys and you do a slam. It's kind of an insta-kill for a lot of low level enemies. It really feels great and it's what you need to sort of take over a situation. Then you can go straight into berserk mode. This was an assassination mission that I was too OP for. Got to it late. I remember doing it early on the first play of this game. <laughs> it took me like one minute. Also back on the complaint about things not being alien enough, there is this big sandworm thing going on and the story behind this thing called the Traveller. I've also got the cruise miss upgrade on the Phoenix and they're not expendable either. You get a handful, you have to buy them, so you can't just walk around flinging those out left, right and centre. So it's mad, you, you find something to complain about and then immediately afterwards it's just wiped off the desk because you're having such a really cool time. The game just keeps playing look at the birdie with you, constantly making you ignore some of its huge flaws, which really are only about progression and the lack of tuition in showing you how that mid to late game works and getting all that stuff on board before going towards some of the bigger camps and difficult massive bosses, which there are a hell of a lot of. Ah, knock it off! 
So what's going to be the verdict then, Cooper? Well, play it. Play this game immediately, because there's nothing around that we've had in the last couple of years that even touches this game's ferocity and ideas, out-the-box ideas with an open-world first-person shooter format. Its dystopian world is pretty damn expertly built, and the variety on all the cards. By the way, I just got those spy bots. They're baffling me as well. Back to the sort of secret story and all the unlockables. It's not a handholder, so you might enjoy it if you're one of these <laughs> say this dark soul uh, freaks that's what i am by the way it still looks and runs almost like a current gen game it certainly runs like one that resolution you never know we might see them swing in and give us something it's been a while and not having this on ssd is a bit of a problem i will say it's low times are excellent as well on death and i'm actually going to get all four of those power-up slots going and probably try and finish this game because it's something i want to put to bed it's it was okay and i feel they deserve at least someone to get to the end of it I was of course Couch Coop. if you want to see more single player PlayStation 5 content, all links in description. I will see you down there. It's almost like the sun is smiling down on us.